What's going on guys? Krusty K's here from the Gold Boys Network coming to you with the MLB Slate Preview for August 30th. Uh, before we hop into this, I want to remind you all you can get all these odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. But let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into this slate. So the first one, Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Colin Rhea versus Nick Martinez. It's got to be Milwaukee for me here. Uh, you get the Brewers on the road at a playable minus 130, and I really think it's solely because they're on the road. But this team's just good, man. And I just, I can't see a, a, a game where, I mean, Nick Martinez keeps these guys in it. So, I mean, for me, it's the Brewers. I think they get to Martinez early. I think Rhea pitches well. Uh, he's one of those guys where you look at the metrics and he really shouldn't be good, but he just finds ways to continue to pitch well. And I think he does that once again here, giving Milwaukee on the money line. Our next one, Atlanta Braves taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. This is Ronaldo Lopez versus Ranger Suarez. I'm, I'm going to go with the under. So I think Suarez just pitches well against this team. And I mean, Ronaldo Lopez, I mean, honestly, he's probably been the most consistent starter for this Braves um, club. I mean, pretty much since the beginning of the season, truthfully. And with all the injuries, especially, I mean, he's the guy. He's definitely been the rock in this rotation. And I think that continues here. Um, like him to pitch really well in the spot. I think this thing does stay under. Tolls eight and a half. Uh, maybe thinking like the close proximity might cause him to struggle a bit, but I don't. Uh, I just, I love his stuff. I love him against this lineup. Give me the under eight and a half here. Our next one, the Boston Red Sox taking on the Detroit Tigers, Tanner Houck, and currently Tigers have yet to announce a starter. Um, for me, it's not going to matter much, though. I like Boston. I think Tanner Houck pitches really well against this uh, Tigers lineup. They are going to have quite a few lefties, which is his worst split, but this team's really not hitting that well right now outside of a couple guys. So I think Huck can manage, you know, to work around the two that are hitting well and, you know, get his club a quality start here and ultimately pick up a win. Uh, give me Boston on the money line on this one. Our next one, uh, Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Game two of this doubleheader. Uh, Brewers yet to announce a starter. Reds rolling out Rhett Lauder, one of their prospects. This is a tough game because it's game two, and like I said, I have no idea who Milwaukee's throwing out. So for now, I'm going to leave it alone. I'll come back to it. I'll drop something in the comments of this video, let you guys know Let you guys know what I'm going to play uh, once Milwaukee gives us a starter because it's really hard to determine where I'm going to go on this one without one. Our next one. Chicago Cubs taking on the Washington Nationals. Shota Imanaga versus Jake Irvin. Uh, it's got to be the Cubs here. Uh, Imanaga is a guy who we all know. Um, obviously, one of the better pitchers in baseball. I wouldn't say he's one of the best pitchers in baseball, but he's had a very nice year. Um, really like him to pitch well against this Washington team who's just flat out not hitting right now. Uh, it's a team that's been super inconsistent all season. A lot of short at-bats. Imanaga likely pitches really deep into this one, and I think he gets his club a win. Jake Irvin, I mean, he's been pretty good for Washington. I'm not going to say he hasn't been. But this Cubs team, their lineup, it's like sneakily getting hot right now. I think they do some damage here against Irvin. So give me the Cubs on the money line. I think they win this one comfortably. Our next one, San Diego Padres taking on Tampa Bay Rays. Martin Perez versus Todd Bradley. Uh, it's the Padres. So, I mean, Martin Perez, since going to the Padres, has upped his curveball usage significantly. Um, seeing a lot more swing and miss, a lot more strikeouts. And as a result, he's just pitching better. Um, he gets the Tampa Bay team, who we all know this lineup is pretty close to poverty right now. And I, I don't think I don't think they have anything for Martin Perez here. I think he pitches really well. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes six, seven innings here. I mean, Todd Bradley, I think he pitches well to an extent, but he's a guy who can get the long ball from time to time. He's going to rely on that fastball a little too much from time to time, and it's going to get him in trouble. So give me the Padres here on the money line. Wait, before we get back to the picks, I wanted to thank you all for watching. Woo! Friends don't let friends watch videos without hitting the like button. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button and like the video. If you're new here and not subscribed, you should go ahead and do so because we're dropping new content each and every day on the Gold Boys Network. We strive to cover every sport and give out picks and analysis and valuable information for free on the Gold Boys Network. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop something new. I'm Brad Thomas. Let's get back to the picks. Our next one, the St. Louis Cardinals take on the New York Yankees. Eric Fetty versus Marcus Stroman. It's going to be the over for me here. Um, I can't trust Stroman at all. Just not a guy who I want to trust. So I like the over. I think Stroman struggles against the Cardinals. I think Fetty struggles against the Yankees. I think we see a lot of runs here. Eight and a half for me is just way too low in this matchup. Um, like I said, both these pitchers, I, I'm not a fan. I think Fetty, um, he's kind of, since like leaving the White Sox and going to a team where I wouldn't even say there's more pressure, but just since changing teams, just hasn't been as good as he was in the White Sox. I really think he struggles in this matchup. So give me the over. 
Our next one, the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Bailey Falter versus Ben Lively. Uh, minus 165 the money line for the Guardians. That's where I'm going to go. Obviously, it's a little juice. Probably pair it with something else. But, I mean, this is the Guardians, one of the best teams in baseball. Uh, you can't tell me otherwise. And I'm, there's no chance I am taking the Pirates in this spot. Uh, getting the Cleveland at a price anywhere under minus 200. I don't care who's on the mound. I'm going to take it. Uh, this team's really good. I think they handle the Pirates pretty easy. I think Falter really struggles. Uh, give me the Guardians here. Our next one, the Oakland Athletics taking on the Texas Rangers. J.P. Sears versus John Gray. Uh, I'm going to take a shot on the Oakland money line here. I think J.P. Sears just pitches well against this Texas team. This is a team, I mean, outside of Corey Seager, I've uh, been pretty inconsistent as of late. And I think Sears can pitch relatively well. Obviously, lefty on lefty with Seager. Uh, should be able to keep him relatively in check. So I do like Oakland here. I think John Gray really struggles in this spot. I know people are going to look at the historic data and say that he owns them. Well, I'm going to here to tell you that historic data, especially when it's from years ago in baseball, does not mean anything. So give me Oakland on the money line here. Our next one, the Kansas City Royals taking on the Houston Astros. Seth Lugo versus Framber Valdez. Uh, it's going to be the Royals for me here. I'm going to take a shot. So Framber overall this season has not been the Framber we're used to seeing. He's been better as of late. Another guy who's increased his breaking ball usage and he's seeing a lot better results. Um, but this Royals team just scorching hot right now. And for me, I, I have to back them. Get them a plus money here. I mean, the Astros, we know they're a good team, but they aren't the Astros we're used to seeing. And let's not try to kid ourselves with that either. So Seth Lugo has been really, really good for this Royals team. I think he could pitch well against the Astros. And I think I think the Royals can get to Framber, truthfully. So I'm going to take a shot here, plus money, Kansas City Royals on the money line. Hey guys, I just want to give a quick reminder that new users can bet $5 at FanDuel on any of the bets in this video and win $150 in bonus bets if the bet wins. Now let's get back to the bets. Our next one, the New York Mets taking out the Chicago White Sox. Tyler McGill versus Jonathan Cannon. I'm going to go with the White Sox plus a half in the first five. This is gross. But Cannon's been like sneakily pretty good for the White Sox. And I just think McGill, even if he pitches well, he's going to have a run or two. And I think it's enough to get, a, get us across the finish line here. Wouldn't be surprised the White Sox are actually up after five, truthfully. Um, give me the White Sox plus a half on the first five. Next game on our slate, the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Minnesota Twins. Kevin Gosman versus Pablo Lopez. Um, I like the Jays. So I hate backing their offense. I, I think I've complained about this like a million times on these videos. Uh, it's just a team that does not come to bat when I back them. But Gosman's been like pretty good for this team. The, the K stuff hasn't been there, so people obviously think he hasn't been good. He's actually been pitching really well. So I think he pitches well against a Twins team that's kind of cooled off. The strikeouts are starting to come back a little bit um, for uh, Minnesota and I guess for Gosman as well. The velo was up last start, so that's something to monitor too. If that velo is back, I mean, he very well could be back. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like this time. But I'm going to take, uh, take a chance here on the Jays and the money line of plus money. I just I like a lot of these road teams on this slate. I think there's a lot of value here. Our next one, the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Colorado Rockies. Albert Suarez versus Austin Gomber. I mean, we're getting the Orioles at Coors. I don't really think I have to tell anybody where we're going with this. Orioles to team total over. I don't care if it's nine and a half. We're, we're playing it. Uh, I think the Orioles absolutely mash here. They're going to shell Gomber. They're going to take care of whoever comes out of that bullpen. It doesn't matter. They're scoring probably 10 runs in this game. Uh, give me the Orioles team total over. Our next one, the Seattle Mariners taking on Los Angeles Angels. George Kirby versus, I'm going to butcher this so bad, uh, Samuel Aljahari. Aljahari, Al something like that. Um, but it doesn't matter because I'm going with the Mariners. Uh, George Kirby, obviously the Seattle rotation as a whole has been really, really good this season. And they're a team that, you know, is looking to try to make a late run here, try to get into the, into the uh, wild card conversation. Uh, I will take the Mariners here on the money line. It's juicy. Pair it with the Guardians from earlier. You get yourself plus money. It's going to cash. It's going to be awesome. Um, give me the Mariners. Our next one, the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the Diamondbacks. Clayton Kershaw versus Zach Gallen. It's the over for me. So Kershaw is a guy who this season uh, just hasn't looked like, you know, Kershaw. I mean, he's getting old. Obviously, he's been hurt, so I mean, it's kind of expected. But I think he really struggles against this Diamondbacks lineup who's crushing lefties. On the other side, we have the um, Zach Gallon, who his fastball, in my opinion, is pretty dead this season. And I really think that he struggles in this matchup, too. So eight and a half, it's actually a higher total than I expected with these two. But I think it's high for a reason. Uh, give me the over eight and a half here. 
Our last one on the slate is the uh, Miami Marlins taking on the Giants. Adam Aller versus Blake Snell. I mean, it's the Giants minus one and a half. I'm going to back Snell to just deal against this fat shit fucking, excuse me, <laughs> this, this bad Miami team. Um, I, I like Snell. Snell's obviously been locked in. We all know that. I think he pitches really well in this spot. Gets to take on a lineup who, in my opinion, is just not good. And I think he can take full advantage of that here. So give me the Giants minus one and a half. Um, that does conclude our slate, though. If you guys do me a favor, drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys are playing. Uh, before we hop off, I'll give you guys my three best bets. So number one, we're going Giants minus one and a half. Absolutely love it. Number two, we're going with the over in the Dodgers-Diamondbacks game. And number three, we are going to go with the Potters on the money line. As always, you can get all my official plays at goldboys.com. If you have a gambling problem, don't want to hurt a gambler. Thank you, guys.